Good morning, folks. We've got something on the sun, something in the climate realm, and cool shots in between. We'll start, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were sort of quiet. No major flares or CMEs, but there is crackling at the sunspot bands, growing and growing. We'll see why momentarily, but first, let's go to the solar wind and geomagnetic conditions. Top squares are Discover an ace solar wind, and there are data errors, missing data, but on Discover, it appears you can see a trend up in the solar wind speed and also in the geomagnetic conditions at the KP index below. So what do we do when we can't 100% trust ACE and Discover data? Go to the other solar wind monitor on SOHO. Link to this other resource is in the list today and it confirms the density bulge followed by the faster coronal hole stream. Still just a minor intensification thus far. Now let's get back to that crackling at the sunspot latitudes. We watched it develop literally all day and began to chain link up there in the umbral magnetic fields in the north. It was indeed a flurry of sunspot production. We've got a number of active regions on the disk now, and we will have to be watching for increases in solar flares, especially as the primary solar uptick alignment is coming together here over the next 10 days. Sun, Mercury, and Venus. Let's start the science articles with some aesthetics. Hubble scoping Herbig Harrow Object 111. A gorgeous tiny jet produced by a baby star furiously nursing off the surrounding dust and plasma. The jet creates shocks and amazing shapes as it collides with the circumstellar material. Up next is a science disagreement you may not have known about. Do planets like Saturn and Neptune exist in the galactic bulge or only out here where the sun is and further? It's now stamped and sent, solidly thinking that these planets do exist at any distance from the galactic core. Little Nugget up next, following our long review of smaller nova events and their changing faces, the wider range of progenitors, and how they're jumping from category to category. Here, we see the folks studying the much bigger kinds of nova also expanding their view of progenitors and pre-nova conditions. Now last but not least, folks, a lot of climate chills with PhDs are furious this morning, as if the title doesn't grind their gears enough. It's pretty much written like a smart aleck, from the communicated messages to the word choices. The entire thing was an unfriendly expose of climate models in the face of actual, observable reality. And so what are they talking about in this paper? It is not the same polar melt triggers cold fresh water intrusion to the ocean that shuts down the AMOC, Gulf Stream, Kuroshio Current, and other heat transports in the ocean. Here, they're talking about the polar vortex events. The polar vortex-driven cold snaps are not supposed to be part of the climate going into the future as they think we're warming and warming and warming, but they are part of what's expected as Earth's magnetic field weakens and the upper jets become more volatile under the influence from both the atmosphere below and solar wind coupling above. And of course, they are indeed becoming more prevalent. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got our Fly in the Wall podcast coming today for website members at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.